Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video. Uh, this is a second video on Virtual Private Cloud. Now as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to start breaking, I'm going to start creating a Virtual Private Cloud. I'm actually going to start breaking these videos down uh, into fairly small component parts um, so that we don't end up with one big, long, unwieldy video. Um, so this particular video is around creating a Virtual Private Cloud. Um, it's not going to be particularly long, uh, it should be fairly simple as well. Um, but in this one I'm going to show you how to actually create a virtual private cloud. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go, go to our console uh, at cloud.ibm.com and we're actually going to create a VPC. Uh, we're going to create the subnet with internet access. Uh, we're going to uh, create a default access control list or ACL. And uh, we're also going to uh, create a, a default security group as well. So to put that into a diagram, uh, we, we're going to uh, effectively create what you see on the picture here. So within IBM Cloud, we're going to select a region. So I'm going to select the London region because uh, that's closest to where I live. Uh, and in that region, I'm going to create my virtual private cloud. I'm then going to create my first subnet, uh, which will be in uh, probably in London zone one. Um, and um, within that subnet, there's going to be, well, there's going to be a, an access control list uh, to control access in and out of that subnet, uh, which will be created by default for me. Um, it will also have a security group for the uh, for the VPC um, by default, and uh, we'll also uh, create a public gateway um, so that we can get some internet access. So without further ado, let's uh, cross over to uh, cloud.ibm.com. Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com. And uh, like everything else, um, you can find the uh, the VPC services in the catalog. So we click catalog, and uh, you'll see right at the top here are the various tiles for VPC infrastructure. So uh, what have we got? So so first of all, we've got block storage for VPC. So this is where you can create uh, some block storage to attach to your virtual private cloud. Uh, load balancers, so you can attach a load balancer to your virtual private cloud. Uh, this is the actual tile we're going to look at in a moment to actually create your virtual private cloud in the first place. Uh, then we've got virtual server for VPC, so this is where you can go and just create some virtual servers to attach to your VPC. And then we've got VPN for VPC, so we'll look at that uh, a little bit later, I think. And this is where you can actually just create a VPN uh, to which attach to your VPC. So we're actually going to create a virtual private cloud to start with, so we're going to, we're going to click this um, tile here, virtual private cloud. And that then brings up um, this particular screen. So this allows us to actually create our new virtual private cloud. So there's a, there's a few things that we need to do on this page. So the first thing is, is to actually give the to give some details about the VPN uh, the VPC rather that we want to actually create. And then we've got some details here about actually creating our first subnet. And um, and then there's some details here about uh, creating an access control list as well. So let's go from the top then. So, uh, so first of all, we're, we're giving some details about our new private cloud. So uh, what are we actually going to call this? So let's give it a name. So names need to be unique, uh, and they also need to be um, they also need to be in lower case. So uh, let's uh, let's give this a, a name. So I'm going to call this uh, my London VPC. And again, um, as a as a rough guide. Uh, around naming conventions, you know, make these things meaningful. So, um, so if this is for a particular project, um, then uh, you know, perhaps name it after a project. If it's, for, if it's for a particular region, which is which is what I've done there, um, you know, name it after the region. So I've, I've created called this just my London VPC uh, because that's um, because that's meaningful to me. So next is a resource group. So as I mentioned in the previous video. Um, VPC is actually um, comes under IAM, so Identity and Access Management, so I need to give it a resource group. So I've actually created a resource group already uh, called VPC Resource Group, and this is where I'm going to, um, this is basically where I'm going to keep all of my uh, VPC related stuff. Um, again, if you want to do this by, by project, then that can make things, um, uh, make things easier, so maybe have a resource group for your project, again for billing purposes. Uh, but but anyway, that you kind of want to just segregate this out just to make it easier to manage. So next we have tags. So um, so if you're using tags, then uh, then again, uh, if you've got a convention for tags and use them here, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, create a couple of tags. So here I've got an environment. So I'm going to call this in, in development. Let's say um, we call that as a tag. 
So let's call this a location. Uh, we call this London because we're going to create this in London. And um, I don't know, maybe project. Uh, 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 foundation skills series is my project. So there we go. So I've got some tags there, and that just means I can uh, then more easily search um, and find this by the tags uh, in, in other screens if I need to. So, um, so we're then going to talk about the VPC default access control list. So, um, so I don't actually have any uh, access control list at the moment for this virtual private cloud. So it's going to, uh, so I'm just going to leave that as a um, in this region, I should say. So I'm just going to leave this as, as as it is. So it's going to allow all. Now the other thing is I can also create a default security group around this, or will create a default security group. Um, so I can also say whether or not I want to allow SSH and allow PIN. I'm going to leave those checked for now because uh, if I don't allow SSH, then I won't be able to actually log into my virtual servers when I create them. Um, and uh, obviously ping is quite useful as well just to show that they're alive. Now this last box here around classic access. So if I've already got um, virtual machines or bare metal servers created under our classic infrastructure offering, so some people might know that as soft layer, um, others as, as classic access or just IaaS, um, if you've actually got that already and you want to enable your VPC to access um, those resources, then click this button as well because this will actually allow you to um, communicate with your classic network. So, um, so if, if you have that then and you want to do that, then check, check the box. Just take note of some of these details here as well. I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to leave that blank because I don't have any classic access for it to, uh, for it to uh, link into, so I'm going to leave that blank. But as I say, have a think about that. Decide whether or not you want to access your, any classic infrastructure that you may or may not have. So next we need to create our first subnet for the virtual private cloud. Now again, you need to uh, give this a name to start with. So again, try and think about your naming convention. So what I'm going to do is, is, is actually uh, create my first um, subnet as a web tier. So it's going to host some web servers. And I'm going to create it in London 1. So uh, that's the zone that I'm going to create it. So I'm going to make, uh, so I'm going to give my VPC, this subnet rather, a name that actually reflects that. So I'm going to call this, um, so I'm going to call this uh, LON1 LON web tier subnet. Okay. So that's the name I'm going to give it. So as I said, I'm going to create it in London. So I'm going to call that, create that in London. When you see there's three zones, so these three separate data centers, three, three uh, locations. Um, so I'm going to select London 1 for the first one. Um, now I don't, I'm not going to worry too much about the IP address ranges at this particular point. Uh, but you can actually change these if you want to. And um, and um, say how many addresses you want, so you can uh, you can uh, see only want 16 or 32. Um, so I'm going to leave that as default, which I think was 64. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll perhaps talk a bit, a bit a bit more about that later on. So that's our subnet configuration sorted out for now. The next thing we need to think about is our uh, subnet access control list. So again, we've only got the one, so it's it's going to create a new one for the default one. So we're going to leave that as use VPC default. Now the last thing here is around public gateway. So this is where uh, the public gateway will actually allow uh, the resources within the uh, within the subnet to communicate with the public internet. So um, so I'm actually going to attach. Uh, so the default is detached. I'm actually going to attach it because I want it to be able to uh, to actually talk to the the internet. Right. So um, so we then come over here, and uh, we can just then have a, a bit of a look at our. Uh, um, at our expenditure. So the order summary at the moment is in, is in the United States. Um, I can uh, change that uh, to, to UK if I wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that for now, but that, that will then give you the estimated monthly cost. At the moment this is going to cost you nothing uh, because basically you've not created any resources in here. So, so the cost of a virtual private cloud is actually zero. So hence the estimated um, zero amount there. Um, a couple of other interesting things there. If you want to have a look at the, uh, the, the, the sample API call uh, to actually create what you're doing here, and you can click that button, and you can uh, you can then see see the code that you might need to then create that uh, via a, via a curl um, uh, request, which is quite interesting to see. And there's also a link here to documentation as well, and, and various uh, other uh, service terms are under these links here. Anyway, I'm going to cl uh, click create virtual private cloud. 
and uh, this should take a couple of moments. There we go. There's my uh, there's my uh, my VPC, my London VPC. So if I click there, um, then you can basically see that um, I've got some IP address range. So these are the locations the um, that I can use. So you can see the address ranges that I have for those particular data centers. Um, you can see when it's been recreated, you can obviously see where it is. See my default ACLs, and you can click on there and go and see the ACL group. And you can see my default security group as well. Now, I notice that my default security group has got a rather strange name. Um, it's basically what's happened here is it's basically taken uh, random names from a dictionary somewhere and, and, and uh, given that as the name of security group. You can rename these, and obviously, you can use your own as well if you. Don't particularly like the name Seventy Tipper Sudoku Deep Skipper. Um, I can I can actually go and uh, actually go and, uh, change that or create my own. Um, so then we've got our subnet. So uh, you can see the address range of my subnet in London One. So it's going to be on the uh, 10.242.0.0 address range. And you can see my public uh, gateway as well. So you can see that I've actually got um, uh, some some public um, network connection to that particular VPC. So let's go and have a quick look at the VPC. Um, so again there's nothing uh, nothing too exciting in here at the moment uh, but you can see that it's uh, again you can see the name of the virtual private cloud that it's connected to uh, and, some, and some details there about the access control list. So speaking of the access control list let's just go and have a quick look at that as well. So the access control list um, this basically is uh, where you can restrict access to um, to your subnet so um, and this is done through rules so at the moment you can see there's only two rules here one inbound and one outbound and basically they're both allowing um, all protocols from any source uh, to any destination within the uh, within the VPC so uh, so at the moment these rules are all pretty open um, so um, these are things you might want to tighten up um, later on and I'll show you how to do that in another video um, and, uh, and, and you may also want to use um, uh, security groups to further tighten things up. So navigation around this is pretty simple as well. Whenever you want to get back to the, uh, the main menu for this, just click here, the all, um, the all access control list for VPC. And then you can, uh, and then you can obviously use this menu at the side um, to actually start um, getting into your VPC. Now there's some interesting things here. I've just clicked on this overview menu here. So there are some actually some great tutorials. Um, that have been created for you, uh, which you can which you can also follow. So if you uh, if you don't want to follow these videos or you want something else after these videos, um, then um, then you can actually follow these tutorials as well, which are really great. Um, and uh, there's obviously lots of other documentation things behind this as well, provided by IBM Cloud. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. So as I mentioned um, a few um, a few moments ago. Um, this is uh, these are the components we were going to create, and this is actually what we have created. So, so just to quickly recap, um, we selected our region, which is uh, which in my case was London. Um, we then created a subnet within a particular zone, um, so we now have that up and running. And uh, we've also now got our default ACL. Uh, we've got our default security group, and of course we've also got a, a public gateway running as well. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to check out the next one for the next step in creating your VPC.